California ISO manages the electricity in the state of California. As part of that monitoring, they include the weather, wind patterns, uh, temperature patterns, um, even droughts can have a significant impact. Even a few degrees on a hot summer day, if we miss the forecast or something changes in the weather, can really begin to stress the system. The more renewables we have in the portfolio, the more critical that will become. We're going to have more renewables, this function is going to be essential going forward. Our primary objective is to plant shade trees for direct shading and to reduce the ambient temperature in urban areas. When you reduce the ambient temperature by maybe one or two degree Fahrenheit, you're reducing indirectly our electric load. So it's a resource that competes with supply side options. Instead of building a power plant, we are saving energy. Public in general can do their part. They can plant more shade trees, they can install or retrofit rooftops that have a higher soil reflectivity. It's basically all of us doing small things, all of us contributing marginally, incrementally, but going in a positive direction. In the long run, all of us are better off. The California Emergency Management Agency is the lead organization for preparing for and responding to disasters. In 2006, we had an extraordinary heat event that resulted in a lot of deaths, and that really prompted us to develop a better plan collectively with the other agencies involved, whether it be the power um, and, and energy providers, the state agencies that are responsible for the health and well-being of the most sensitive populations, the agriculture community, as well as those who, um, who protect animals and pets, as well as the first responders. The plan is in place now and it's something that we exercise and utilize on a regular basis um, in hopes that we don't have an extreme heat event, but we're ready for it if we do. If you look at the last 24 years uh, here in the city of Napa, we have flooded nine times. Prior to that, in a 40, twice the amount of time, a 48 year span, we only flooded seven times. The thing that was uh, different in the 05-06 flood was the fact that areas that we had never experienced flooding before flooded. What's unique about this project is its uh, approach to solving flooding problems using environmentally sensitive flood protection methods rather than just uh, hardening and concrete. Came up with a solution that would meet everybody's needs first and foremost for flood protection, that we would get 100 year protection, but we would also we'd restore the river, we'd restore the habitat. I think a lot of other places could probably use the same sort of technology and the same sort of methods for, uh, for flood protection. Uh, the California National Guard's Joint Operations Center has the capability to see everything in real time. So we're monitoring the weather, uh, monitoring uh, the traffic, uh, economy communications, everything that could potentially affect the state, um, we're watching. So three personnel are in here 24-7 um, for the most part. Um, and when a disaster does hit, we have a quick reaction force um, of soldiers uh, and airmen that are prepared to go directly to that disaster within a, a certain amount of hours. When there was over 3,000 uh, different fires in Northern California, um, this Joint Operations Center, uh, we could see exactly where the fire perimeters were. We could see where they were heading. We can lean forward and anticipate um, the effects and how they're going to affect those local communities. We can anticipate the resources that will be needed. So we can look, if we have it within the state, we can give the first responders a heads up that, hey, you know, this is likely going to be an area that's going to be affected. You know, every day is, is, a, is a new day um, and uh, we're constantly, you know, always ready and always there uh, to provide assistance. We have about a 250 acre project. We've tried to really push the envelope on innovation. And one of the biggest innovations is creating a net zero community which creates as much energy as it consumes over a year. But just having a, a made up project that's one example on a university campus was not our objective. So that's why this is delivered by a private party, a private developer. If you and I are both developers and in 10 years time, I have a net zero bill and you're now exposed to wherever California utilities are in 10 years time. I'm thinking I'm a little bit more valuable than you are.
It had to make economic sense. It had to make sense in terms of rents. It had to make sense without university subsidy. So what we wanted was a project that could be replicated in cities across the country and across the globe, not just Disney Tomorrowland. This is the real thing.